Right, so um, it's a quick, <laughs> some trips down memory lane. So I, I joined the BOS in 1984. And, <clears throat> and one of the first things people said to me was, it's such a shame you weren't a member last year because uh, Yoshizawa came to us. And, and for about 10 years, all people said was, oh, you just missed Yoshizawa, didn't you? And yes, I did. But um, so I joined in 84 and back when I had uh, uh, more impressive hair. And there's me with Mr. Brill and Ted, the late Ted Normington. We did a, a little musical session at Cambridge Convention. And you can see the glass of wine there, which was clearly the inspiration. Um, so that was my that was my second convention. So my, my hero is the man on the right there, Kunihiko Kasahara. Mm -hmm. And this is in Freising in Germany. And that's Paolo Mulatino on the left. And given in Paolo is, is kind of a forgotten man these days, and he's pretty quiet. But he arranged for Kasahara to come because he'd published a book of his. And he knew I was a massive fan. So he bought me a, a ticket to fly over to Germany to meet my hero. Um, and I thought I was quite stunned by that. So that's an, another of my heroes. Um, this is Lillian Oppenheimer, who I met in my uh, early days down in London. And I was amazed how small she was. She's kind of almost like a hobbit. Um, and she, we, we were kind of queuing up to have selfies taken. And she says, everybody's bigger than me. Um, but it was lovely to meet her. And I managed eventually to meet uh, the great Mr. Yoshizawa. And what you can't see just below the photograph, I was wearing a pair of shorts. And in retrospect, I thought this was probably not very uh, respectful to, to greet Yoshizawa with a pair of shorts. But I think by this point, he'd got used to Western fans and he never said anything. And uh, um, it was great to meet, uh, you know, probably one of the world's greatest ever creators. So... Uh, Right, so that's the memory lane section done. Um, this is my companion, Bagpuss, who uh, I use. He goes on the road with me, helping with my guitar equipment, and occasionally he kind of helps with origami. So I like to keep him near. And here we have a piece of paper. So you want a square, and it wants to be coloured on one side and white on the other. And this model was created for the 40th BOS convention, which was, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. And Mick Guy set a challenge to create a minimal swan. So a swan using the least amount of folds. And I, this was the one I submitted. It's probably not, it's more folds than was necessary. But um, if I can just pull up my diagrams, there we go. Be prepared and there we go. You can't see these, but I can. So we start with the colored side up and turn it so the corner is towards you. And this is a kind of a slightly unusual fold in that there are quite a, a few points of folds without reference. So normally we would fold to the top corner, but I want you to fold just a bit short of the top corner, like so. The exact distance doesn't matter. And, and the more you make this, the more you, you can adjust these dimensions and proportions to suit yourself. Now we're going to turn the paper around and we're going to take the inside right white edge and fold it over to the upper folded white edge. To put together complicated sentences here, aren't I? If anyone gets stuck, by the way, um, there's a, a chat option on the right if you want to just open up the chat window and just say help or unmute yourself and say, what are you talking about? And then I'll try and help. Okay, then turn the paper around again. So we have this and we're going to take it. Uh, I've now done my mirror image. <laughs> we're now going to take this left corner and fold it not quite to the end like so. And make a crease. So we'll stop in again, just short of the top corner. Nice firm crease. 
then unfold and we're going to reverse that inside. So if we lift open this flap, we've got valley crease, which is going the direction we want. Then we're going to put fold a valley crease along that edge and convert the other crease into a mountain crease. So we have this shape. So we fold it over, flatten it down. We have this shape. So you can see, hopefully, that is, that is the basis of this one coming along. So the head was delightfully simple. You, you may or may not remember, um, we had an amazing creator called John Smith, and he devised this system called Pure Land, where every crease was either a valley or mountain. There was nothing more complicated, no reverses or sinks. And, and he kind of inspired me quite a lot to find alternative ways to make a head. So normally here with a bird, you would reverse that head forward. But there's a much simpler option. We, we take this loose corner here and fold it over to lie on the back of the neck, like so. And then tuck it underneath. So lift up the neck, put the flap underneath. And so there we have the head kind of nicely in, in place without any complicated shenanigans. Now we're going to take this white corner here and fold it to the other end. So we're folding this white triangle in half. Like so. Then open it up and we're now going to make a squash. We're going to put a valley fold in along this vertical raw edge here and squash the paper down like this. So that becomes a valley, uh, a mountain. There's a valley there and it flattens into this white rectangle. And then to get rid of this, we could use, we could use my favorite tool, uh, but we're not going to, we're just going to lift up that flap and tuck that white triangle underneath. So it's tucked away. So hopefully you can now see the shape of the, the swan. It's a, it's a fairly stylized swan, but it is swan-like. Um, but I don't like this right angle corners because you very rarely see a right angle corner on a swan. So I want you to, in fact, turn the paper around. We're just going to throw part of that behind at whatever angle you feel is appropriate, just to round that corner. So the swan, as I wanted it, was now finished, but um, I was a bit concerned that it's hard to see the neck against this blue background. So I wanted rid of that blue background. So of course the first thought came to mind, but no, we passed that by. We're gonna turn it over. So here's the right angle corner with the raw edges coming out. And we're gonna fold this along an invisible line and the crease is going to start where this little corner is. So there's a white corner here. So we're gonna fold parallel to this edge and start it where that little corner is. It doesn't have to be perfectly parallel, but probably if you point it at this corner, it's gonna be something like. Nice firm crease, and then we're gonna go into convert that from a valley to a mountain. So I'd probably turn the paper around lift that flap up and where this valley crease is, we're going to just open up these layers and tuck that inside deep in there. And if we turn over, you now have no blue there. And that's kind of where I stopped. Um, but I had a, an email from Edwin Corey suggesting one more step and I think it, it makes a big difference. So what he suggests is that we fold this behind. The crease is going to be parallel to that edge and it's going to pass through that corner. So we're just putting a mountain fold in. Like so. So it's a valley on this side, but you can't see where the reference point is from that side. So from this side, 
we'll just fold that's not a very neat fold but what the heck so it passes through that point and that might seem like a, a subtle kind of thing to do but it has two things it makes the it makes this corner nice and clear and it somehow reflects this angle so i find it much more pleasing so that's that's how it was and that's the final step so this this angle is mirrored in that point and that, that kind of for me finished it so with with all these stylized designs you know you can keep going um you know, we, we could fold behind some of that but that was the point i thought it was complete any more folds for me made it worse rather than better um it's a difficult point to decide because you can keep going can't you you can add creases and folds add more and more detail to a subject but at some point you need to decide that the subject is is apparent it's complete and it doesn't need any more refinement so that is model number one a, a minimal swan and it's an interesting area to work in because it, it's kind of free form in some ways. And you're getting away from the idea that you have to make things like photographs, every, every point present. We're just trying to do enough to capture the spirit of the subject. Okay, so you can relax there. And I'm going to have a quick swig of something toxicant. Any questions on that? If, if you want to say something, you can unmute. Um, in fact, I think if you press the space bar, it will unmute you temporarily. Nice you know, comments in the chat, Nick. It's very good. I got the head a bit wrong. I need to practice more. It's nice. I like it. Yeah, it's, it's the thing where you, you try it folding it a long way, then you try folding it a short way, and, and at some point you'll arrive at a proportion that suits you. But... Obviously, it doesn't have to be a swan. It's a generic bird. Um, it, it's kind of duck-like, I suppose. But the, the the request was for a swan, so I call it a swan. <laughs> um, we could, of course, have a blue background and a white swan, which might have been more appropriate now I think about it. But there we go. Right. Model number one complete. Model number two, you'd be delighted to know. Nick Griffiths, if he's here, will be delighted to know. It needs three sheets of paper. And they don't have to be the same colour. Uh, but but mine are. I've got lots of this purple I need to get rid of, so I'm going to use it. So three sheets of paper, and we're going to fold each of them essentially the, the same kind of way, but with subtle differences. So <clears throat> we'll start with sheet one, which is going to have the white side. Let me move this out of shot. The white side upwards, and we're going to divide it into eight. So if you can do this without my assistance, fire away. But we'll start by folding in half. So I always fold the paper away if I can, um, so that I can see the edge. I find if you fold the paper towards you, sometimes you, your hands are covering up the part you want to see, and you have to start going like this. So I find it much easier to fold away. Line it up, hold the paper, and then put the crease in place. Nick, for the people who are speedy, do we want to fold all of these into eight? Or? We do, but one on the white side and the other two on the coloured side. Thank you. Then open out and fold the edge into the centre. It's a good point. I doubt if any of you are going to be struggling with dividing a piece of paper into eight, but all habits die hard, so drawing it out. So we divide into four, then we fold to the quarter crease. One thing I should point out is if, if you have difficulties, if your fingers are a bit feeble and you have difficulty putting that crease in, what you need <laughs> is a Hans Werner Gut wooden individually handcrafted folding tool and you can use that to make nice firm creases and you have a little point here for, for all kinds of purposes opening flaps out for example and you can get this and many others different styles all individually handmade from wood and you can buy them from this address nickory
Nice low over. Right, keep going. Fold to the opposite quarter to get the inner three eighths. And then repeat, répéter, mes enfants. Okay, that's one. So the other two sheets, we're going to do the same, but we're going to do it from the coloured side, if you don't mind. It doesn't really, really matter. The model will work, however, whichever side you fold from. But, uh, with the utmost precision at all times, as I'm sure you do. Even council members. Somebody once pointed out to me to a convention, he, he says, it's strange. I go to all these folding classes and I never see any council members. Where do council members go at folding time, he said. Um, I think the answer was it depends if the bar's open or not. <laughs> of course, we have matters of great importance to discuss, and that usually requires some lubrication. I couldn't possibly comment on that, Nick. Is that because you're mildly drunk at this minute? <laughs> No, that, 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 that's afterwards. <laughs> anyway. There we go. So I've done two from the coloured side and I've done one from the white side. And we're going to progress with the white sheet. So next step, really tricky. Nick, no, shall, we just see, shall we just see where people are at? Do you have people? a poll? I might have a poll. Um, one second. No, that's the wrong poll. I created a poll. Uh, bear with me, I created one for folding, but it's not come through. Let me see where that is. You probably did it for the convention Zoom rather than the AGM Zoom. Nope. I'll just tweak this one. I think by the time we have the poll, you will have you will have. That might, that might be true. We're probably caught up. So I'll show you the next step anyway. We're going to turn it so that the creases are now lining up in a vertical direction. And we're going to fold over about one eighth of the nearest edge. Just like that. I can't I can't do a poll uh, from here for some reason. Zoom is not playing nice today. Can anybody raise their hand if they're worried and stuck and behind? Or just unmute yourself and shout, help. Yeah. Help me, help me. Got one person okay. with hand up so far. Well, I suspect because we're doing them all the same by the time, like, like, we'll, we'll have another pause when I've done all three. Yeah. Okay. So with this one, twizzle it round and do the same on the opposite side. And that particular section is complete. So we shall put that over there and we'll take the next one, which we did from the coloured side. So we do the same, we turn it sideways and we fold over about an eighth. Doesn't need to be measured at all. Then we flip that top to bottom and we turn over the same amount on the opposite side. So the first one has two on the same side. The second one has one on each side. And the third one has got two on the coloured side. No, two, two on the white side. No, look, look at these pictures and they're not making sense to me. 
Where, where, the, where I've got two on the white, the white side, side yeah. my, my other creases from the white side of mountains, aren't they? Yes, this is what's confusing me. So we'll we'll have we'll have two on the white side on this one as well. That's what's confusing me because I've turned it over relative to the first one. So I shall arrange. Do a sheets. Just a little recap there, Nick. There's there's all three sheets. The one this one has valleys and two color strips. This one has valleys and one white, one underneath. This one has mountains and two colored. But it honestly does not matter one fig. This is just color changes. All will become clear. So there's no more extra creases to put in. So Shall we have another show of hands if anyone's still catching up? Right. Corey's got a hand up from last time. Hmm. So the next thing we need to do is... I've to make got one go person giving you a round of applause, but I think that's a hand up, Nick. <laughs> Right. We'll have them all on the valley side, please. That's the next thing to do. Valley, valley, valley. And we'll go back to the first one, not that it really matters. So um, th that person will, will catch up because we're doing the same thing. So first thing we need to do is to put those valley creases through the extra coloured flaps. So just fold over and reinforce that crease so, well it's all the way along and we're going to actually form it into a, a tubular form and probably the easiest way of doing that is by folding over two sections then fold over three sections and tuck the three sections inside the two sections. So we'll just pop in that. There's a little layer there which forms a kind of a pocket. And we'll just put the three behind each of those flaps, slide them in. If it helps, just open one out until you can slide the other into it. But eventually go all the way in. Try not to flatten it until you're sure it's all the way in. Then give it a good flatten with your hands further road folding tools. Ask your size And their price fed auch. So having slid three into two, we can then open it up and just pop out all the creases. Should have this kind of shape, like an extended triangular prism type thing. That was a fun, and you'll note somewhere on it, there's a raw edge we can see, which is where the joint was. And we need to make sure that Anyway, note that point for later on. Right, I want you to do the same with the other two. There's one. So do this from the valley side each time. So fold two over here, fold three over here, and then tuck the three into the two. This time the flaps are on the outside. So hopefully it should be a little bit easier for you to slither them into each other. It's a Harry Potter folder, slither in. And then inflate it all. Oh, I forgot to convert those all the way along, didn't I? Fool. So just flex it around. It's not going in very smoothly there. 
that hopefully you can't see on the slow res webcam. So there's number two. Number one, number two, and we do number three in exactly the same way. Fold over two bits, fold over three bits. This time you've got to really exercise your mind because you've got to tuck one on the inside. So the white one is going inside into a white pocket and this one is going outside into a red pocket or a purple pocket. This takes a great deal of skill and prestigitation. Open them out as before. shaping it and you should end up with three little hexagonal tubes any any hands up uh curry has a hand up but it was up when we first asked to raise hands it's remained up has it right. yeah I don't know whether Curry is still a little bit behind if we're all together and have all got tubes <laughs> like well, yours. Times, times are running, so I'm, I'm going to press on. Mm -hmm. So we start, the first one we're going to take is the all colour, and we're going to take the one which is colour at one end, and we're going to very carefully arrange them so that the folded the raw edges line up like that so this is a raw edge and that's a raw edge then we're going to take the mostly white one and somehow put it inside the colored one so because your folding is precision obviously they, they won't go in but if you just kind of squeeze together a little bit like that you should be able to get one popping inside the other says he demonstrating very badly. Please. It don't want to go in, but it will. There we go. Once it's in, you're okay. So you just have to squeeze the edges together enough so that it goes in and then keep pushing. And they should take up the same sort of shape. And you can slide one in and out. Then take the third one with the double end, and that is going to go inside the white one here. So again, if you want to line up those raw edges, you can do it. Doesn't really matter. Pop it in a bit, then just give it a little squeeze. And obviously, it's a bit tighter now because. We've got three, but it should very go in there. Just put your fingers inside, make sure everything's nice and smooth inside. And then you've got three. And what you have is a telescope. So you can look through it. You can look at, you can admire swans from a distance. And you can pop it out and the first section comes out first and then the little flap which is reversed catches on the flap the second one and pulls the second one out and the flap reversed on there catches another one inside there so it, it won't go any further than that unless you really yank it but it will compress in so it gives you a color change here which i like but it, it doesn't matter you can have it all white all colored any combination you want so it's a collapsible telescope and this was created, uh, I'm, I'm writing a book on space, origami in space. And I was on the phone with my good friend, Wayne Brown. And he said, what about a telescope? He said, could we make a tube, hexagonal tube and make it a telescope? And between us, we kind of evolved this. Max Hume's done something vaguely on the same principles mm -hmm. as has Kunihiko Kasahara. Mm. But they are different. And... Uh, that's the joy of origami, different interpretations, the same subject. I remember um, 
our illustrious chair doing a pirate's outfit, and I'm sure it would go very well with his pirate outfit. Ah, that it be. <laughs> I think I think um, Mar is it Martin Van Gelder did a a simple version. I think sort of perhaps triangular, what's it? A bit like a Toblerone. <laughs> Now you've got me going chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> chocolate's a bad move. <laughs> anyway, there, there it is. So that's that's a teles expanded telescope by Robinson and Brown. And I don't know if any of you creative types have ever tried working with, with somebody. It's really fun. It needs to be somebody that you trust and somebody that you have a good relationship with because at some point someone will say, no, I don't like that. Why don't we do it this way? So there's a bit of accommodation with each other but very often people you know, people will push you in directions that you probably wouldn't have gone in the first place so i do recommend just sit with a friend you like and say oh, what should we create today right that should give us just enough time to make one more model and this time i'm going to or bagpuss she's going to show you what this model is and it's this Ooh. which uh, is a philip shen model which he calls Form One. And the reason I've included this was because I think it was, yeah, my first BOS convention. I'd been, I'd been writing to Paul Jackson for some time because he was the editor of the magazine. And I met him at the convention and I looked at the exhibition table and I, I, I said, I want to be creative, where do I start? And he dragged me over to suppliers and he told me to buy the Philip Shen collection he, he says this is the only book you'll ever need and I don't know if that's quite true but I, I've remained a, an absolute devotee of Philip Shen ever since and he, his work has inspired me to a huge degree and I I'm finally managed to meet him down in London once which was a, an absolute joy um, so I'm going to teach this it looks fiendishly complicated but it isn't this requires a bit of pre-creasing and it's also in a book which you can buy from BOS Supplies, Philip Shen Selected Works, I believe it's called. Now, to cut a long story short, we need to fold this into thirds. <clears throat> if you can, then I want you to divide this into thirds. If you can't, quickly grab another square, and I'm going to show you a way you can make a template for making thirds. We fold a diagonal, we fold an edge to the diagonal as if we're making a kite base. And then we take the opposite edge and we fold it. We do it that way, can't we? Fold it to the kite base. So three folds, a diagonal. Let me uh, let me highlight these. Hey, that's your diagonal. That's the kite base crease. And this one here, we fold it to the kite base crease. And this point here is one third, which is really, really nice. So all we do is turn the paper this way and we fold to the one third. I'm going to make it a bit firmer so I can see it. Make my sense go in a bit. So you can see that is the same as that, so it's a third. So having found one third and put a third crease in, we can use this as a template. So we put our nice pristine square inside the template. Make sure it's all the way up to the edge. And then fold to touch the raw edge. And let's put a one third crease in. And we just keep going round. In fact, we need to do we need to do two at right angles to each other, don't we? So that's another crease. So we've now put two thirds in and we can use those to put in our missing thirds. Because what we don't want is those three creases on our, our folding paper because they're not actually, well, bits of these might be used, but most of them wouldn't be. So that's a, just a nice template way of making a third neatly. So we have thirds and what we're going to do now is to fold the outer sixth creases and they're going to go, where's my pointy pin? 
Imagine a diagonal go in there. We're going to fold the one sixth crease to the middle of this square. So where the diagonal would be. So we fold to the third and we crease to about there. And try not to extend that crease because we want these to be, uh, well, we don't want to put in creases that aren't part of the model. Whiz round and do that three times. Or carefully, carefully move on and repeat. I don't know what it was that attracted me to the, the Shen, but there's, there's a real beauty in in putting pre-creases. These, these are obviously pre-creases that we're going to use later on. And most Shen models require a lot of pre-creases. And then at the end, it kind of collapses. It comes together. Concrescence, I think he calls it. Um, so that's put in the sixth crease. So hopefully those six creases just meet each other and don't go flipping out to the edge. But if they do, such is life. Now we're going to put in the halfway creases, but we're not going to crease this central square. So put in the halfway crease there and there. Again, from the colored side. So we fold edge to edge, and then we crease the outside. There is actually a bit of an art to putting a crease in so that it doesn't extend any further. Usually you put it in here, you can see that there's quite a bit of folding going on at middle section. So if you can do it, I suppose what you should do is put the crease to about there and just slowly pinch it into its inner extent. Because what we don't want is unwanted creases. Nobody wants unwanted creases. And I, I, when I'm sequencing a model, I try my level best not to put creases in that aren't actually used, that are just for reference. You know, I'd rather find another way to create the reference uh, because I think it makes the model less beautiful if those creases are just sort of all over the place and they're not actually used. Right, a bit more pre-creasing. We're going to turn corner on. In fact, I've got a little aid for you here somewhere. Here we are, that's the crease pattern. You okay. can see there's mountains on it. All the creases apart from the mountains are naturally valleys. So if you want to dash ahead, that's what we're aiming at. So we're going to put in the creases, which we're going to put in these creases here, the ones that meet the center of the edge. So we don't have a center point to fold to, but what we do have is creases on the side and a crease there. So we're going to put the paper up against that halfway crease and we're going to crease that little bit and that little bit. So just the size. So crease here and crease there. And we're going to do that all the way along. So it's kind of like blintzing, but it's only the outer bit of the blints. You might think this is a lot of faff, but trust me, it's it's worth worth the effort. Yep, that's all those creases. So if you want to simplify things, just put the whole crease in, but if you want to make the effort. Only a little bit further to go. We should still finish on time, Tony, if you're worrying. We're now going to flip over to the white side and we're going to put in the diagonal, but only in this section here. There's a little square here. We're going to put the diagonal there and there. So turn the corner towards us. Hold point to point, and we're going to crease that section there, and also there. Noch ein Mal bitte in den anderen Richtung. Little pre crease, and that's putting in the valley creases, the mountain creases you can see on here. 
And then we're going to put in the central square again. So it's mountains on the colored side shown there. So on the white side, we're falling to the opposite one sixth. And we're just putting a crease in. That's that one. And then we go around and we do that. I'm sure this is not showing the creases very clearly. A bit of side light, but it's a bit late now. I'm sure the crease pattern will allow you to figure it out. And that's all the creases we need. So we now make this using those creases. And this is what I was saying about the crease pattern approach is to put the creases in really neatly and accurately, and then we use them. So what we're going to do is we have central square. That's going to be the base. Let me leave this kind of, let me get rid of that. Leave this around maybe from this side because this is the white side. We're going to form a central square and the bits I'm interested in are these creases here. In fact, turn it so there's a point and we're going to make that. That's what's happening. We've got a square formed by mountains and we can grab mountains on either side and push that in. This needs to be wrapped around. That's why we don't want creases there. We want that to be curved. And it's forming a little triangle here. So we've got the central square, mountain triangle, mountain square with a valley diagonal going in. Looks like I've slightly misplaced that crease, but what the heck? So we should be able to push that in. Turn around and just do the same with the next corner. So that one's gone in very nicely because I've put the right, it's a bodgy crease there. So we're not flattening, we're doing the opposite of flattening, we're unflattening it. So pinch the mountains, push together to form that central square. And you should find the center kind of takes care of itself. Says he. So push in that valley, press together. And make sure all these points are just curling around nicely. So that's, you can see it kind of coming together from this side. So get all those going in together and you should be able to sort of push them together a little bit to really define that central section. It's a lovely form in itself now. And to lock it, all we do is we're going to fold this triangle inwards. So we have to make sure these layers are held flat. And then the crease is there and we're just going to fold that little triangular flap inwards. Like so. You get plenty of chance to practice. So flatten the two layers underneath so it's a single piece of paper. Push in on the crease that you've got. Don't do any other flattening yet. Keep it kind of as it wants to be at the moment. And this is the, the, the underlying premise of a lot of Shen models is, is what's called paper tension. We're using the paper to lock itself. We're not tucking things into pockets as it were. We're just using the paper's own natural tendency to, to stay where you put it. The last one's probably the trickiest, but just fold it so it's flat and then flip that point inside. And that's how it will look from the underneath. And if we turn over now, you, you, you see this, it's almost like a, like a, a lily pad. And I, I really, really like it in this, this kind of form where the sides are, are curving round. But in order to create the, the Shen version, we're just going to open it out. And what we're going to do is to flatten these points here. So you just need to get your fingers inside and there's a mountain edge here. And if you pinch that together, you can see the white points start to come out of it. Just work your way around so that the paper is sort of curving a little bit. If you stop it from curving by just flattening that crease, then the flaps all pop out. And by the time you've finished, the white is almost not there anymore. So you had it kind of curved in and by putting those creases in, you form a square section. So ideally, this will be clean. There'll be no creases 
marring its surface. And this is how it looks from underneath. Mm. Beautifully kind of held together just through the tension in the paper. So that's Philip Shen Form 1, I believe it is. So you, you should certainly buy the printed copy or you can download a PDF of uh, Paul Jackson's version. And there's a follow-up collection as well um, by Ilan Garibi, I believe. No, I could be wrong. Memory's going. But there's two volumes of Shen's work and I do recommend it to you. So that's... Um, that's my little session done, and I hope that's warmed up your fingers because you'll be kind of going like this for the next hour or so. Um, but do stay with it because the, the running of the society is this is the only time really where you get to ask questions of the councillors who make decisions on your behalf. So query things. If you've got some in your chest, then do share it. And most of all, this is this is nearly my 40th year as a BOS member. And um, I'm now president, so I feel it's time to step down from the council as, uh, particularly as I hope we have a, a replacement web officer coming in. So if you've got any interest at all in helping the society and spending the next 40 years of your life, having fun, folding paper, chatting, helping people, learning things and making new friends, that's the most important thing about origami, I think. You, you learn, you meet new people, you make new friends, and that's what makes the world go round. So I do urge you, if you're at all interested, then put your hand up. You don't have to sign up for particular duties, but just get involved with council and give a little bit of time and, and help move the society forward. Because frankly, there's too many old codgers on council at the moment, and we need some fresh blood, in my opinion. So I'm stepping away to make room for that fresh blood. Okay, Tone, sorry, I've been three minutes overrun, but... Uh, um, over to you. Okay, th thank you very much. We, we, we'll forgive you the three minutes. I think I think that's um, finishing off our very nice Chen model is well worth three minutes of anybody's time. So, um, um, if you, um, I, th I think if you if you want to temporarily um, unmute and give Nick a big round of applause for that lovely lovely calling session. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay.